Hey, my name is Mike, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to farm the Tombstalker mount from the King's Rest dungeon on Mythic. It only drops on Mythic, so make sure it's set to that. If you don't have flying and you don't know how to get to the dungeon entrance, head to the entrance of Atal the Tsar, and then on the right side, there is a path that's easy to miss. Once you see it, you can just follow that into the Atal the Tsar zone, and then just run through the middle into the King's Rest entrance. If you have flying, obviously you can just fly straight to it, but in case you've never been there before, in case it's your first time, or you're just unfamiliar, or don't remember showing you that start of this video. In this video, I am item level 232. This video was filmed on July 26th, 2022, in patch 9.2.5 of Shadowlands. There are still some things that do quite a bit of damage at my item level at this time, so this dungeon will get easier with future expansions and, and higher up item levels, so... If you can't do it just yet, just wait a little bit till Dragonflight, and by then you should be able to do it without any issues. Once you head in, and again, just want to stress, it's mythic only that this mount drops. Once you get in, you're going to make your way down the stairs, and the door here is going to open on its own after a little bit of RP. The animated guardians on that you first come across you can skip, and you can actually skip these minions of Zul as well, but for the video I just wanted to show you what happens if they hit you. So they don't do any damage, or sorry, they don't take any damage, they just absorb all your hits. But if they touch you, they will fear you for like 5 seconds. So if you don't have a break and you don't want to pull extra mobs, just try to avoid them or just have something available to break that fear. These animated guardians, if you can skip them, go ahead. But if not, you'll pull them. And the only thing they do is this suppression slam frontal ability that, for me, I don't know, I've always kind of thought it was hard, not hard to see, but just wasn't as obvious as every other frontal cone in the game. But anyway, if you do see that, make sure not to stand in it. I don't know why the first one didn't, but if you do stand in it like I am here, you'll see that it stuns you for a couple seconds. So just to avoid that, move around them. They'll just stay in place while they're casting it, so just get behind them or to the side of them. That way you're not getting hit. Once you're done killing them, head inside of this room and click on the Serpentine Seal at the back of it. After a little bit of RP, there's going to be four sets of adds that spawn in each corner, and at the top of this room here there's going to be a pack of minions of Zul that kind of patrol the area as well. So if you can't pull all the mobs like I am here at the same time, keep an eye on those minions of Zul so that we are not getting feared into any additional packs you don't want to pull. But like you're seeing in this video, I am pulling all the mobs. The casters can be LOS'd around the corners if you want to get them all grouped together for some nice AoE. The mobs don't do anything crazy. There is a Shadow Bolt and a Deathly Chill I believe that can be interrupted from a couple of them. There's a, um, a champion that has a, puts like a purple shield in front of him where just if you're hitting him from the front, he'll absorb it and you have to get behind him to hit him. And then there's just some tornadoes that you're seeing spin around me that if they hit you, they will do a knockback. It's a little annoying, but nothing too crazy. Once you kill all those mobs, the first boss will come out of the middle of the pool there and a the flyer on the room, and then you can start attacking him. Everything he did to me didn't do any damage. So he'll do an ability called Spit Gold, which back in the day what you would do with that, he would select a random party member and then you'd have to run to like the back of the room because after it would drop, it would leave a pool of yellow on the ground and then eventually the boss would spawn oozes out of those yellow pools that if they touched him, I think they either healed him or did like an AoE. So you just wanted to avoid that. But nowadays Spit Gold is absolutely nothing. It doesn't even put a debuff on you, so that can be completely ignored. The other ability he does is that blue circle that you saw and this one right here it doesn't do a lot of damage and i don't know why this second one didn't knock me back but it'll knock you back so i would just put point your back to the direction of the door you're going to head into after you kill him and then just get knocked back into it and then once you kill him you can make your way into this hallway and into the next room that is locked off by the shadow of zul the shadow of zul is going to do a little bit of talking and then there are four sets of mobs you are have to kill one by one they start off all purple and you can see that see like the like those guys there, all of them are going to kind of pop when they are going to spawn. The order in which you kill these mobs isn't always going to match what this video is, it's kind of randomly selected, but you do fight all four. For this first set, the king here does a blade storm that kind of does a little bit of damage still, so if you are getting a lot of damage on that, just avoid it. Just run away, he'll follow you, but just uh, stay out of his line of sight. The other mob just does a shadow bolt that can be interrupted or spell reflected. The second set of uh, guys here has a purple swirly that, that spawns, and then I believe it turns into green uh, stuff on the ground, or there's like a second ability that spawns green. I don't know for sure. I'm pretty sure it's the purple that spawns the green, but just don't stand in that. It does, it does still quite do a little bit of damage, but like I said earlier in the video, 
as newer expansions come out, as you get higher item level than me, it's going to be less and less damage, and these guys are actually going to be quicker and quicker to kill because you do more damage. For the third set, there is a uh, the king that I'm targeting now does a chain lightning eventually that does you used to do like raid wiping ability if you were near him, so now it doesn't do that much. And then the the cynical Embara person that I'm targeting now has an induced regeneration that I believe will fully heal the target, so you might want to interrupt that or just focus fire them first before she casts it, or else you might spend a little bit more time fighting them. And then on the fourth and final set here, there is a raptor that will uh, pounce and then start doing a frontal ability that does actually kind of still hurt. There's that purple swirly you saw that turns into that purple pool on the ground, just don't stand in that. And then the actual, the queen there just does a shoot ability that doesn't really do a whole lot. So it doesn't matter which one you focus, just try not to stand in the raptor's frontal cone. After that, make your way down into the, the next long corridor here where you can skip um, all the all the trash. There isn't a whole lot, but there's a couple of guys here. The weapon master that I'm walking past right now is actually for a world quest, so you might not always see him. If you want to kill him for the world quest, go ahead, but he won't always be there. And then making your way into the next boss room, there is a bunch of green oozes that are in packs. So I don't pull all of them in this video and you don't have to pull all of them either. Uh, one thing I would recommend not doing just yet is pulling all of them at the same time. In the test run I did before filming this video, I pulled all of them and I damn well near died. Because what they do, those green swirlies that they're spawning, if you get hit by that, it puts a stacking debuff on you that is a dot and it also slows you to like 90%. So at that point, it makes it pretty much inevitable to not get hit by it, and it's just rough. So I would be very slow with or with pulling those, and just just be just be careful. The um, the constructs on either side of the room, I forgot those pull with the boss if you don't kill them. So I thought I'll just continue filming and 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 get this done. You'll, I, I do kill the boss, but you'll see it's a little bit dicey, so I would kill the constructs unless at, you're certain that's not going to be an issue. And of course, one of the constructs pulled more oozes, so that was a little bit dicey at the start. But typically, you just want to kill these first and then pull the boss. For the boss himself, he does drain fluids, which actually does quite a bit of damage and is the main reason I almost died when I was doing this. Um, so I was kind of sweating it. I do pop some defensive cooldowns and a heal, so... Normally that won't be necessary if you don't pull extra stuff like I did, but I'm cool and I like to make things harder on myself. And then the other thing he'll do is spawn a nice big orange swirly, which spawns some fires, which again do do still do damage, so just make sure not to stand in them. I would start, basically what you're noticing in this video is that I'm trying to position them in a way that when I start moving, I'm making my way towards the exit. Honestly, it's not... I, I, I'm like not super smart, but it's just it saves me an extra couple of seconds instead of running from the middle of the room to the exit I just go I'm already at the exit. And I can just go so just Min maxing my time there But that's really it. The, this boss used to be not soloable because what he would do is he would throw you into one of the um, Tombs I forget what they're called uh, in this room and someone else would have to click to get you free But they changed that uh, in a recent patch to make it finally soloable when you're walking past uh, to the next area, the Shadow of Azul will spawn these ads that uh, aggro you before they spawn, so just hang around here to pull them. There is uh, some spectral bolts they do that can be spell reflected or interrupted, and there's a hex as well, which doesn't do anything now if you're soloing it, so you don't have to worry about that. And then this Berserker, I think it used to do a, like, quite a bit of damage on the tank, but nowadays it doesn't do much. The pack in the middle there you can skip entirely and then make your way to the bridge heading into the third boss fight. The mobs on the bridge you can skip, but because um, because the guys in the middle, they'll pull if I try to go on the bridge that spawns after the third boss. I just kill them anyway because I, I don't want to have to kill them later. So And I can't skip the first pack yet. If you're a rogue, you can probably later in expansions you will be able to as well. But for now, I just pulled the entire bridge here and, and killed them. Uh, the big um, berserker guy, uh, the spectral brute there... He has a large brown circle he'll spawn around himself. If you're in that, and as you saw, it'll shoot you up in the air, as you're going to see here again. If you don't have, like, a charge... or actually, doesn't do it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, I guess. But if you don't have a charge, if you don't have, like, a heroic leap or something that'll prevent you from dying, either get out of that or put sh or make sure your character is, like, underneath something where there's a, where there's a ceiling above you so you just don't go flying. You just hit the ceiling and, and that's it. Uh, and then there's... Uh, of, the, of the other 
guys there, there is a healing tide totem that will heal them, so just focus down that. And then that's it, and then the, the guys at the door are the same pack, so I sped that up. These Spectral Berserkers are the same ones that you fought a little bit earlier. They don't do a whole lot. They used to do, they used to do quite a bit of damage on the tank, but nowadays, nothing really. And then once you kill them, you're going to make your way to the third boss fight, which is, again, you're not going to have always the same order here. So it's, there's three bosses you fight in total, and it can be the first, second, or third one can be any one of them. So again, it's not always going to be this same order that you're seeing, but you will fight all three. So Aka Ali, the Conqueror, he just does his barrel through ability, which he'll charge through you. Back in the day, what you would need to do is have, ideally, your entire group stack in front of you. So that way the damage is spread out between everyone that's hit. And then once he dies, he'll make occasional appearances throughout the rest of the fight, and he'll charge you. And you can't target him, he just charges you and does a little bit more damage. Nothing crazy. For Xanazel the Wise, he has a Lightning Bolt that you can interrupt. That's pretty much his primary ability. He has a Poison Nova ability that used to be the thing you, you need to interrupt, because it will pretty much wipe your group. And as you can see, the first boss there is I can't target him, but he's going to barrel through me. So this Poison Nova ability used to wipe your group, but now it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. So can be ignored and then the call of the elements you'll spawn a bunch of totems around the, the room which you want to kill so I, I focused on killing him first and then i started working on the totems there's one that spawns swirlies and i think another one stuns you if you get too close or it stuns you in general so make sure you kill all the totems before you get to the next boss which um, for me is kula the butcher i like to fight this person in the center of the room because there's this swirly that they do and then it spawns two axes that slowly rotate out from their spawn points and just make their way around the room you don't have to fight him in the middle that's just what i've always done since this was an actual dungeon uh, just so that way it's not like the the all the axes are kind of following the same pattern and they're not going to bug you specifically when that boss is like the first or second one it's a little bit annoying because they'll keep spawning throughout the fight and doing those swirlies so it's a little bit annoying but once you kill those guys you're going to make your way back and then make your way onto the bridge which will spawn here in the center it doesn't have to, as you see, I'm, as you see, I'm running across it before it's actually there, so it just looks like I'm running on air, so you don't have to wait for the bridge to actually get there, you can just start running. At the end here is your final mob, the Shadow of Zul, who is another one that does a little bit of damage here, so you might want to, might need to pop a cooldown, or uh, just play it safe. He does some Shadow Barrage, which doesn't do a whole lot, but his main ability is this um, orange circle he's going to put on me shortly, which when it expires, does a little bit of damage. Uh, this one right here but you'll also see, also see on the left there there's that pool that is exploding what you would typically want to do in, in a group anyway or if you're ranged soloing this is you want to stand in that because if someone's standing in it only that person will take damage which i guess doesn't really do a whole lot i don't know if there's less damage you take if you stand in it or if um it doesn't do any damage at all but you'd have you you, you used to want to have someone stand in that so the entire group isn't taking damage but as you saw i just let it hit me and I almost did die there, it was, it was kind of close. And then after that you make your way down to the final boss, who for some reason was not letting me attack him, so there's a little bit of a skip there. But I, st I charged into him and pretty much, or I think it's at 90% or somewhat really qu quickly into the fight, he will spawn a, a raptor called uh, Reban, 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 Redban, I don't know. And the raptor is pretty much like the one trash pack where he will pounce on you and start doing a frontal, a frontal uh, swipe, so maybe just don't stand in front of him. The boss himself will do Gale Slash, I believe the ability is called, where he will hit you and then it will spawn a tornado that circles the entire room. Whatever direction you're facing is the direction that tornado will go, so ideally you'd want to like make sure all the tornadoes are going the same direction, so have him face, like for example you just saw a tornado spawn, have him face the same direction so all the tornadoes go in that way, but you're not going to be fighting him very long for that to matter. And then at a certain point he gets on that second raptor you saw, um, that one... He will start absorbing all your abilities, so kill the raptor first, and that raptor does a little bit of, of a fear. Once you kill that raptor, you just fight the boss. There's going to be brown swirlies that spawn. There's two different patterns, so you're seeing the first one here, which is the brown swirlies will just circle around the room. There's another pattern where it's like half the room. There's like going to be... So basically, it's like swirly, clear, swirly, clear, swirly, clear. Just stand in a clear spot and, and don't get hit by it. And then that's it. Once you kill the boss, you can head back to the start where you first ran, into the, ran in and loot and hopefully get your mount. So, good luck farming. I didn't get it this run, but hopefully I will. It's, it's a, one of the very cool looking mounts, so it's, it's really cool to have. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and good luck!